All right, YouTubers, welcome to Captain Rob 73 Pyro Headquarters. Most of you have seen the Pyro Headquarters. But anyways, we're back. And we're going to be doing a little color-coordinated mortar rack fusing project today. I'm going to take these three 10-shot racks I have here. I'm going to put all red canister shells in this one, white in this one, then blue over here. Then I'm going to fuse them to go off, you know, three at a time, ten times. So 30-shot rack should be red, white, and blue. I'm going to fan them out a little bit whenever I mount them to the boards closer to the holiday. But, um, of course, red, white, and blue is for the American flag. That's my plan here. As long as the shells are labeled correctly, which we know that can sometimes be an issue with the uh, Chinese and their labels. But I have the... Uh, you can be using the Zeus shells, Zeus um, King of God shells, and the 5-inch spud gun shells. And so far, the ones I've shot of those have been labeled correctly. But anyways, and also, you don't have to use red, white, and blue. You could possibly use red, white, and green. If you're a Latino pyro, which from my YouTube experience, I know there's a lot of Latino pyros. So you can easily do this with red, white, and green, or whatever country you want. But we're doing red, white, and blue. Anyways, see, I have all my canister shells put in these different ammo cases just for easier storage and easier access. Like this whole case here, these are all red effects. You got red chrysanthemums, red dahlia, white strobes. This whole case is red. And then this one, it's a larger case, I have mixed canister shells bagged. And here, I have them bagged up kind of according to colors. Like these two packages here are purple effects. And don't be confused by the colors on these shells. The wrappers are, it's not anything to do with what's in the shell. And this bag is white strobe shells. And this bag here is all lemon colored shells, which lemon transfers to yellow if you're Chinese, and so on. But anyways, I'm going to do a cut here and get all my, I'm going to get my 10 reds, 10 whites, and 10 blue shells lined up and we'll start making this little project here and doing some fusing. Okay, we've got our 30 shells lined up here, as you can see. And this is how I got them laid out. See, I got silver and red peony, and then I got a silver glittering willow, then a sky blue peony, and it goes on. This one here is a red dahlia, white strobe, and I got a white strobe, and I got a blue burst white strobe. And they're all like, we'll roll blue, low, roll white, roll red. So. We'll get them in the tubes and we'll start fusing. All right, YouTubers, I've got all the mortars color coordinated, dropped in their tubes. I've done my delabeling as I've showed in previous videos. I pulled all the labels off, tried to cut down on the scrap in the yard and the neighborhood. But right, we're gonna do a real quick um, little safety tip here. You know, I've got 30 mortars all loaded in here. And you can kind of look at the fuses, how they all stick out. Even though these are different brand names, they're all canister shells. They all the fuses stick out about the same. Now, if you get one of these, I'll try to find one of the. Uh, all right, stick one in upside down. Which I'm gonna take the tape off the side. If you get one in there upside down, which the way they're taped in there, it's kind of hard. All right, I've got one in upside down now. You can see that you've got one with a fuse that's way longer than everything else in your racks. So that would be a key indicator that you got a problem. So if you're fusing racks and you come along one mortar tube that has a fuse that's three, four inches longer than everything else in your rack, you really should check on your shell orientation. Just a quick safety tip. Okay, here we go with the fusing. Got my GoPro set up here. Hopefully it's getting a good picture. But I've already done the first row. Now what I've done, hopefully this can 
see what I'm doing here. Bring all these, first I bring the two outside fuses together. Snip this first one a little short with our non-sparking anvil cutters here. Of course, we know where that goes. Right down in there. A little more effect. But I'm just using uh, generics, clearance, Walmart tape, scotch tape, masking tape. Um, let's see, and I'm just getting this first one. Now, you don't have to go real tight. You just want to get these all held together so they transfer fire. You don't have to wrap it tight. You wrap it too tight, it can actually snuff the fuse out. I've seen this happen before. And that's common if you want to use a, I've learned this from experience, people will take and use little zip ties on all this, which will work. I've done it many years. But what can happen is you can get the zip ties so tight that they stop the fuse from burning. That's happened to me. So keep, I'm using, I always use the tape method now. Now I'm not using Dave's magic tape because I just don't have any. I'm using uh, Captain Rob's clearance tape here. It's on clearance at Walmart for a dollar roll. But just wrap these up. And the reason I'm using this yellow, this is like the one second per foot fuse. I got it from uh, Pyro Creations. I think it's about $5.80 for 50 feet. As long as you're buying quite a bit of fuse, the shipping is uh, reasonable. But I've got the two outside fuses connected. Tried to overlap them about the same amount. And this middle fuse, I'm going to put across here. Go ahead and tape it. I'm going to leave the middle of it exposed so I can put my... I guess you'd call it my runner fuse, my fuse that's going to run down the middle and set this off in succession. But, uh, so now I've got two rows done. And I'm leaving these two pieces here exposed because I'm going to run, probably tuck a fuse right down the middle. I'll probably start out with some slower stuff. All right. We're back to it. Just got a phone call. Messed up my whole program. But again, we'll we'll do a couple of these rows. Then I'll cut the camera. I'll finish them up. Then we'll come back to fusing down the middle. Try to keep this video from being really long. Another thing, if you, if you guys have never used this fast burning yellow fuse, it burns hot, very hot, transfers fire very well. So I'm not too worried about them not lighting these fuses. I know from past experience it'll be no problem. Plus, if you see I'm overlapping these fuses by quite a bit. So there's a lot of contact. There will be really no issues with fire transfer. We'll trim our extra fuse here. Add an extra effect right there. On a side note, I've even, I have a bunch of like flying fish fuse I ordered at some point in the time, some time in the past. I thought about cutting some small pieces of flying fish fuse and dropping them all in there. So they'll, it'll light when the mortar comes out and have somewhat of an effect, rising effect, maybe you can call it. But anyways, I'm going to cut it here. I'm going to finish fusing down the line and we'll, we'll come back to 
setting up the trigger fuse. All right, we've got all of our sets of three, red, white, and blue, all fused together to go off pretty much at the same time. Now, we're gonna go down the middle with Visco and get them to go off, I'm figuring about every five seconds. How I figured that is, these tubes are about on a three and a half inch center. That just worked out when I designed all my racks and I used the template I use. I just went outside and burned a three and a half inch piece of this Visco and it took five seconds. So we're going to have three shells shoot off every five seconds. We might hasten it up a little bit at the end. But for right now, I'm going to try to get three and a half inches of Visco between every set of three. And you can see I already have, hopefully you can see, I have a piece of Visco off a roll running down the middle. Now in my experience, what's better than one piece of Visco running down the row? Two pieces. So I want to run two pieces of Visco side by side. This fuse is very inexpensive and it just helps the, it's a peace of mind for me that's not going to go out. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this one back here, run another one up through the middle, start taping it up every, I'm, I'm not even going to measure it, I'm just going to put it right over the top of the tubes and call that three and a half inches every time. Here we go. Got a good piece sticking out at the end for however we chain it. That's about five inches. Get it running pretty straight to the end. I left a little bit at the end just in case things don't work out. Things don't come out perfectly pulling it through here. Remnants of a, I think this was a 20 foot package or something. Let's throw it over here with my fuse. All right. The way these first two rows worked out, I kind of have a little gap in there. So I'm going to just pull the visco through that, get it even. Hopefully, you can see. And see, this one piece of visco from being on a roll even has a couple kinks in it. That's why I like to use two pieces, in case one of those kinks causes the fuse to go out. Now, even though I ran it through the middle of those two fuses, which probably definitely ignite them, I'm going to turn it sideways a little bit so we get a little more contact area. And just give it a good wrapping. Like that. Now we just got a big old ball of fuse and it's going to turn into a big old ball of fire. When it hits right there, it's going to light all that stuff in that row. Now we're going to center that up. Move this to the center. That mortar tube. Go ahead and take that. Big one. It's like four fuses right there. So we can double check that with our tape measure. It's right around three and a half inches. Gonna work out. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Now, what will change this a little bit is this yellow fuse, fuse, and even the mortar fuse is really fast. And since they're gonna be touching this visco, they're gonna speed that little section of visco up because you're always gonna it's always gonna burn at the fastest fuse you got. Like if you weigh a piece of if you're if you're a uh, fusing mortar shells together and you're weighing visco through them and you overlap the mortar fuse onto the visco you should know by now that mortar fuse burns a lot faster than visco so for whatever section you have the overlap your visco is going to burn as fast as the mortar fuse so keep that in mind when you're doing your fusing some people make mistakes that way I've made mistakes that way I think there's a guy maybe like Po Pyro or something. He's got a video about that. He did the same exact thing I did one year. He had a, a 25 shot milk crate rack. You probably know that um, 25 H, 
the PM mortar tubes fit perfectly in a milk crate rack. And I actually did that last year, put them all in there, and I just chained, let's see, hopefully you can see, the mortar fuses together like, like this, like I had one like the other, putting a few inches of uh, mortar fuse between them, thinking that would space it out a little bit. But, all right, I gotta cut this fuse because I got this all jacked up. Wait, no, 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 I didn't. Let's move it over here. Anyways. I thought that would space that milk crate out with a, you know, a few inches of fuse between each shot. I wasn't considering the fact that mortar fuse burns, you know, it burns at, I'm thinking like a few seconds, four seconds a foot or something. So when, it, when my long fuse show got to the 25 shot milk crate rack, yeah. That went off in just a, I don't know, five seconds or something, maybe something, something along those lines. I wasn't really wanting that to go that fast in my show. But due to my error in thinking, it went fast, real fast, which was good. I mean, it looked good. I was just hoping to see the effects, individual effects of the shells. A little bit better not all blown up on top of each other like a little mini finale or something a little bit short there but that's what happened that's how i learned these last two rows i might run out of fuse a little bit you might go have to go a little faster that work See over my arms. I don't think I'm not the best video photographer, videographer, whatever the term you want to use. And they, yeah, this last one's a little short. The last row is going to come about half as fast as the other ones, I'd say. But there we have it. We got our three. Mortar shells across, red, white, and blue. They're fused to go off simultaneously, in my opinion. Be a little bit variation in the fuse, who knows? Then I've got, we'll call this the trunk fuse, on about three and a half inch centers. So we'll have 10 shots, three 60 gram canisters per shot. I guess that makes this a 1800 gram cake. And uh, it should last should last just under a minute. I guess it would be about about 47 seconds if I guess the shortage back here. But we all know these always go off faster than we have planned. So I'm saying 47 seconds. It'll probably take probably take 30 seconds or something. But I'm hoping for the closer to a minute. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, some extra blue tape I have and cover these fuses. So we don't get any jump fires. The, usually the Visco doesn't write real easy from sparks, but this mortar fuse it doesn't have any kind of coating on it. It could, could get a jump fire. So I got a bunch of extra. This is a 3M. What do we call this? This is just like painter's tape. I used to use this a lot. Used it a lot last year in this doing this right here with it. But I kind of didn't buy any of this color this year because this tape ended up all over the yard. And it's bright blue. So I'm, I'm pretty sure there's still sun out there blowing around. But I thought this neutral color tape, just regular painting masking tape, it's not as visible when it's laying around. But I'll, I'll cut some of this out so we don't have to uh, make a half hour video out of this. <laughs> Although, this little project, I'm sure you seasoned pyros know, this takes a long time. That's why I'm starting doing my 4th of July stuff. And it's still May. So last year I tried to do it all in like a week. And that was crammed up at the end, hustling, stressing. 
this year. I'm way ahead. I've got more product this year, too. Anyways, we'll cut forward. All right, everybody. Switch cameras here. Going handheld with the cell phone again. And here we, we get a close look. Here we got everything. All the fuses are covered from the top. Try to cut down any sparks falling on them. Actually, you can see a couple little places I might need to touch up. I always do this when I'm fusing stuff. It seems to keep everything lit and keep it from getting lit at the wrong time. Now, when it gets closer to the 4th, like the day before, I will go over, so I'm going to have all kinds of cakes and all kinds of racks, probably set up in a small area. I will tinfoil the whole thing like the pros do. I'll wrap it all in tinfoil around the edges, just so no hots or no low breaks can get in there and light this when I don't want it lit. But I don't, I'm not going to, I don't put the tinfoil on it till really probably the day before the 4th or a couple days before the, whenever I'm doing my show, or it's the 4th or I might do it on the Saturday before the 4th this year. Just to keep, just to cut down and, I don't know, I just think tin foil could possibly get some static electricity, maybe light some stuff when you don't want it lit, especially if it's sitting in your garage for a month. So, that's why we're going to hold off on that. But anyways, there you go. There's a, a color-coordinated 30-shot angled mortar rack. Captain Rob out.